Hi, thank everyone, you. and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we would like to introduce you to Associate Professor Benoit Gilbert, who will talk about uh, structural engineering and what career opportunities ahead uh, for those who are interested in this field. So welcome, Benoit. Thank you. Thank you, Galia. So welcome, everybody. So let me share my presentation that I actually switch off. I'm very, uh, very clever sometimes. So let me open it again. All right, here we are. Give me a sec. I should have begun. All right, okay, here we are. All right, so um, in this uh, webinar, I'm going to talk about career in structural engineering. And um, so a bit of overview of what we're going to, we're going to see. I'm going to talk a little bit about me because I've got a I went through a certain path to go where I am now, and I think hopefully you can learn a, a thing or two. Um, talk about what a structural engineer is and the importance of using a matter. I'm a big advocate of timber, and I'm going to tell you why. And also why I like my job. Um, so a bit of bit about my journey. So um, if you look at STEM, in the STEM of in STEM, I'm basically the E. So um, so you can see from my accent, I didn't grow up in Australia, I grew up in France. And uh, when I was at school, I really liked maths and I really liked physics. And um, so when it's time to choose his career, my brother was an engineer. So, and also the, everything with engineering was fitting the subject I liked at school. So um, it was ticking many, many of the boxes. So I decided to, to be an engineer. And also a good thing when you choose a career is to see what is the opportunity of the job. And as an engineer, you can find a job. So also was something that I really like about engineering, you can find a job and it was very practical and it was it was very technical. But what I wanted to be, I wanted to be an environmental engineer. And um, life is what it is, I didn't become an uh, environmental engineer, but I'm a structural engineer, but you can always learn from what you're doing and try to, with your choices, get the best of your choices to do what you want to do at the end. And I'm going to develop that a little bit later. So because I wanted to be a um, structural engineer, I wanted to do engineering school in, uh, in Strasbourg when I was living in Nantes, which is here. And uh, but I was not very good in French and I was not very good in English. And because of that, I just couldn't get into that school. But what I realized a little bit later is that school was all about chemical engineering. And I really don't like chemical, I'm more like physics. And it was actually a good thing I didn't get into that school, but because I didn't make some informed choices, I, I could have gone into that school and I didn't look enough what I wanted to do. So what is important, what probably what I want you to get, get from my journey is you need to try to make informed choices, make sure that what you're doing is what you want to, you want to do. And then I ended up being in Marseille, which is the south of France. And then in the last year, you had to choose an option in the Master of Engineering. And I specialize in marine engineering. So marine engineering is basically working on everything with offshore and mainly doing some offshore platforms. So it was all about offshore and taking petrol from the, uh, from the ocean. And then in 2002, when I graduated, I found a job designing uh, offshore platforms. I spent about three years doing that. So I learned a lot in that. But uh, and this is some of the um, the project uh, I've done with basically from some um, uh, some platform to go on the Caspian Sea uh, and the one on the left hand side is a project on which I, I work actually design part of this platform and uh, I really like it a lot. I learned a lot out of that, but it was a bit far from what I wanted to do. So it was basically if you look at petrol, it's more about polluting and more about environments. But still, I learned a lot out of that because you need to make the most out you what you have. So I learn and then later I try to do a bit what I what I want to, to, to be. Uh, then I took a plane in 2005 and I came to Sydney. And uh, in Sydney, what I did, I did a PhD and I was a little bit tired of industry. I wanted to more doing research and then I decided to move into the academic job. And then 2010, moved to the Gold Coast. Well, now I'm working at the university here and I'm researching on structural engineering and I'm teaching structural engineering and I'm mainly researching on timber structures. 
come back a little bit to that later. What is structural engineer? Um, so a lot of words here. I don't really want you to read all of them, but this is a definition based from the Inst Institute of Structural Engineer in the UK. So to summarize, if you want to be what a structural engineer, you make sure that buildings or bridges are sized correctly so they do not collapse. So it's quite important. You've got the life responsibility of the life of people when you're designing a building, a bridge, anything. So it doesn't collapse. It doesn't kill people. You need to understand the various materials. So you can design in steel, in concrete, timber, different materials. We need to understand how they work. So it's a lot of physics behind it. It's a lot of maths and physics because you need to understand how you're going to build and how it works technically, the different materials. You need to understand how a building is loaded. So if you look at building where you are now, it's going to be subjected to different loads, wind, uh, gravity load, and you need to make sure your building can raise those loads. So you need to understand how the building is loaded and how your load is going to transfer to your building so your building doesn't collapse. Make sure your building is safe. As I said before, you're responsible for the life of the people inside the building. You need to understand math and physics. I already said that. And it's a very practical job. So it's something that where you design something and you're going to see it being built. So it's not, it's very concrete. It's not something where you, you do something on a computer and you never see it. You actually see it after you can walk past a building and say, well, I designed that. This is actually, I've done that. So if you look at structural engineer, your job can vary from houses, we design some houses to design tall buildings, very, very tall buildings, or bridges, tunnel. And I'm going to show a video of what you do not want to happen. So this bridge was built in the, um, in the, um, in, um, in 1940 and collapsed a few months after, after it was, it was built and it collapsed with a wind of 60 km an hour. So it was very, very light wind. That's the opening of the bridge. And then we're going to see, so a few months after it was opened, there was a light, strong wind, but not too strong, and the bridge started to twist with the, uh, the wind was going through the, uh, through the cables and was putting some vibration like a guitar string, and it was, and you can see what's going to happen. It was twisting and twisting and twisting. Look at that only car on the bridge. And then it collapsed. So you do not want that to happen. So you need to understand the physics for that not to happen. There was only one person die in that, in that collapse and it was a dog inside that car, that lonely car on the bridge. So nobody died here, but if you look at this, this, this video, it's Minneapolis. Oh, bridge. Here you got a bridge. They had an issue with the connection, and the bridge collapsed, and quite a lot of people died during that, that, that crash. It was peak hours um, in the morning, and the car was on the bridge. So you do not want that to happen. So you need to make sure your bridge is sized correctly, and you understand your load, you understand the physics of the different material for that not to happen. So you can work on project. If you look at structural engineering, they're responsible for tall timber buildings. What you've got on the left hand side is the building construction is one kilometer high. And the second one is 800 meters. This is in Dubai. This one is built and it looks something like that. So 800 meters. So at the tallest, builder, uh, tallest uh, building in the world, and, and you can do that. So some of the engineers, structural engineers, were responsible of making that happen. Basically, if you're an engineer, very few people are going to work on very tall timber, so tall buildings. You're more going to work into houses if you're working in a very small company, or like on the right hand side, you're going to design mid mid rise buildings or also bridges. So it's probably more the most engineer who's going to work into buildings or bridges, which is quite a couple of story high, and, and, and of different materials. It's a very practical job. So 
probably half of your time you're going to be in the office working on the computer to make sure you your building is sized correctly, making sure the drawings are done correctly. And then the other half, you're going to be on site talking with the engineer, talking with the uh, building contractor to make sure the building is actually built according to your design. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a, a mix between being in the office and being on site. So that was basically a bit of structural engineering, and you can you can you can actually ask me some question uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. But what I want to um, I want to to to, um, to talk is about how important it is to to choose your material. So when you design, you can design in steel, you can do concrete, but you can also design in timber. So I'm a big advocate of timber because I love the environments, and timber is basically the sustainable material. So I had a video I wanted to show, but it doesn't play. We can we cannot hear the sound. But timber, a good thing about timber, if you plant a tree, it's going to grow. And when it grows, it's going to absorb carbon. So it's going to store carbon into the into, into the wood. And you cut the tree, and if you do something with the wood, you're actually storing the carbon. The important thing is actually to plant another tree. So if you keep this cycle of planting, growing, cutting, planting, growing, you're actually removing carbon from the atmosphere. But you cannot do that with concrete and steel, you're just producing carbon. So timber buildings are actually the very sustainable uh, buildings. And that was the video I wanted to show you. So this building this is in Brisbane, this is 25 King Street. It's being uh, commissioned a year ago. It's a 10 story, 52 meter tall, entire made in, in, in timber. And uh, if you look from the inside, this was during construction. It was looked like that. Everything, the beam, floor, columns, everything is in timber. It's now what it looks inside. And you can actually, this is another one in Brisbane, which is in construction right now at Kangaroo Point. This is this one is a um, residential building, and it's also 10 story high. So what does it look like in the uh, at the moment? Because it's in construction. You can actually be quite tall in, in timber. This one is the 80 meter tall uh, building, and this is in Norway, and it's all timber as well. So timber is very sustainable, and you can make a choice of actually choosing between material that are not sustainable, and do also some buildings and design some buildings we are more sustainable. So um, big advocate of timber. So I'm just going to talk to you what I basically do as a structural engineer, because I'm not a typical structural engineer. I'm working for the uh, in the university, so I teach, but also I research. And, and, and what I do, I love breaking things. So I build things and I break them. This was a concrete, so I'm concrete slab that we we actually broke. We build it and we're trying to understand the collapse behavior of the um, of the building. Can do in steel also. I can break steel. I can break timber. But basically, the idea is you're trying to, we are before the structural engineer, we're trying to understand how the material works so we can inform the engineers actually in the office to be able to tell them how they can design. And connection, timber connection, so try to make sure timber connection are strong enough. So if you want to know how strong enough to be able to develop some design rules, you need to push them to the test. So this one was, the beam was 600 millimeter deep. And some of the project I'm trying to work on as well is trying to use timber that nobody wants to use. So this one, plantation timber, so very small trees. Nobody wants to use them. So what happened when you got a plantation, you got some trees, some are growing straight and you keep them to make very high quality wood. Some are not, got too many branches and not going straight. And, and, and they basically they cut them and they leave them on site to rot. So what we're trying to do, we try to find some use from this from these trees. And what we do, we peel them. So on the left hand side, you've got a tree. That it was before. And then we peel it like a big if you want, toilet paper, which go on the right hand side. You've got a very thin sheet of, of timber. And we glue them together to make some new products. So it's basically waste products, no, waste matter nobody wants. And also it's timber, so it's quite sustainable. And then we put them to the test, we break them. And the idea is to be able to be used in uh, in some buildings. Another project we were looking at, if you look at a, a, a building 
And if you got any an accidents, anything happening and you're losing one element, like like what this one, this one, you want to make sure your building is safe and doesn't collapse. So this one is a collapse of a timber buildings in uh, in, in Germany due to some pure uh, poor design. Want to make sure that doesn't happen. So we're actually looking at that, and this is some tests we've done in the lab, where we remove one columns, and then I can show you what it looks like in time lapse. So we push, we push, we push, and we try to see how the building is behaving to make sure we can inform the engineer who are designing them how they can design it. So basically break it up to the end. So just a bit of conclusion, it was about 20 minutes I'm on time. So what I want you in uh, 11 or 12, if I understood correctly, what I want, I think you should do, you should need to make informed choices. I think in, in my where in my journey to where I am, I didn't make infor informed choices and I did manage to learn along the way and do something I like, which is working as structural engineers, but working on matter which is more environmentally friendly. But I think I should have probably do a bit more research to make sure that my choices in terms of degrees, in terms of work, were actually correspond to what I wanted to do. So make sure you make informed choices. And, and sometimes you don't do, you, you cannot do what you want to do, but you can always learn along the way. You've got a lot of things to learn along the way. And, and, and try to learn and find, and find ways to still come back to what is important to you. You always got, you haven't got one pathway to do what you want. Sometimes you want to do something, you cannot do it, you go through a different direction, but you can always find a way to come back to what you want to do, or at least find something you enjoy and is in line with what you like. So make sure, always learn, even if it's not what you, you are planning. Stay open to opportunities. You've got always a lot of opportunities coming up. If you want to, if you open to opportunities, you're going to get a lot of doors opening to you. So make sure you open to every single opportunity. If you like maths, physics, and science in general, I think engineering is a good fit for you. Um, structural engineering is one of the options. You've got different options. Um, you need to do something you like, but if really something which is practical and technical, engineering is very likely a good fit for you. Um, if you want to be a structural engineer, basically what we're trying to make sure, we're trying to make sure building is, is safe and is not going to fall on our heads. So it's technical, practical, and you can actually see what is going on. Thank you. Okay, Benoit, we have a question here um, from a student, from the audience. Yeah, okay. Um, so first question, you can ask question. Yeah, Do you have to learn material science to be a structural engineer? Um, so if you do need to learn material science, uh, yes or no, you need to know materials. So you need to know the characteristic of the material that, you, um, that you're going to use in the buildings. So that's going to be part of the degree. During in the degree, you've got you've got some a course which is called material in um, it's uh, material engineering, I think, where you're actually looking at the property of different materials. This is built in into the degree, and then after you've got other courses, we like if you want to design for in steel and concrete, you, we've got courses where we are looking at designing with different materials. So this is embedded in the in the um, in the civil engineering uh, degrees. So you need to know about materials, yes. Um, that question you want to answer first. Okay, I've got no more questions. Um, just ask me any question you want, just type it on the chat. Again. What, what, what I think is why I want, I, I want why the questions are coming. You need to make sure when you choose your degree 
to something you like and try to make the most of everything you're doing. It's very important you guys must do something you like. So I think this is very something you need to get out of that. So why did I choose structural engineering? Um, actually it came to me, so it's what I, I, I was telling you, I wanted to be an environmental engineer at the beginning and actually, and then I couldn't do that. It's probably not a bad thing because I didn't make informed choices. I don't think I would actually like it. It's not probably the kind of technicality I, I like. It was more about chemical engineering when I was more about physics. And, and, and life being what it is, I ending up being uh, a structural engineer. I really like it, but it's not probably what I was planning at the beginning to do. Uh, and, and so basically it's the choices when economic, because when I was, when I graduated, the economic was very done. So I found a job as structural engineers and I made the most out of it. And I tried to do what I wanted to do out of that. So I really like what I'm doing. It was probably my, not my, my first choice. I've got more questions I haven't seen. Uh, what are the kind? What are the Frozen. I'm frozen. My yes, camera is frozen. Need to turn off your camera and turn it back on. Yep, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm seeing I'm not frozen anymore. Uh, all right. So what are the current prospects? So if you're a structural engineer or civil engineer. You can be, you can work for, um, you can, sorry, you can design building bridge. You can be, you can be on site. So you can be in the office designing. You can be on site actually building. So you got some engineer actually responsible for the, uh, for the, um, uh, for making sure it, it is built. You can be a, a project manage, management as manage, ooh. You can be in project management as well. So you're going to oversee all the different aspects between the architects, the, uh, uh, design engineers and, and the site. So that's going to be the different aspect you can look uh, in terms of structural engineering. Uh, you could also, I mean, the good thing being engineers, what I said at the beginning, you can find a job. It's not something engineering is practical. You got a job out there, especially in civil engineering. So it, it's, um, you can always choose. So don't, uh, when you, when you choose engineering career, you're not fixed to one job and you try to change along the way. So um, it's probably the thing I insert this one. It's uh, you can be from design office side to um, project management uh, career prospect. What well, a major subject I essential in this career. So um, in so what major subject are essential for this career? So yes, so it's already answers. You can click on the link, but I think you need to know math, physics and, and science is a lot of that and when you actually start working is also about communication. Um, is it better if I do specialize math for engineering or will math method be good enough? So I think Galia, you may answer to this one. I think you've got this is what's the requirement for engineering. What is the math requirement for to enter engineering? But you need to know maths. But I don't know if it's maths A or maths B or maths C. Okay, you want to answer this one? Okay, specialist mass is recommended. Thank you, Galia. So essentially specialist mass is recommended subject. It's not compulsory for engineering, but mass methods and general English are the compulsory prerequisites for engineering to enter but, engineering. But if you're an engineer, if you're an engineer and especially if you're on the technical side, you need to get basic knowledge of maths. It's it's very important. It's um, you do calculations and you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. So you you need you need you need to do a little bit of maths if you're on the technical side of engineering. Okay. What are the property required for building stability such as the bridge? <laughs> property required uh, for building stability. So um so you need to make sure you you bridge can carry the gravity load. So I'm not sure what the questions mean. But you need to make sure your, your bridge can uh, carry gravity loads. So all the um, the cars which are going on the bridge or the uh, people on the bridge, you're not going to collapse because of that. And you need to make sure it can also carry the lateral load without the wind. 
So you need to make sure when the wind is pushing on the side of your of your bridge, it's also not going to collapse. So you've got a property is very vague, but you need to make sure your is shaped correctly. It's uh, it's strong enough. It's also not going to deflect enough. I'm not sure if I can re-answer these questions, but if you can get it a bit more precise, I can try to answer it better if you don't mind. Structural engineering appears to be a rather stressful career considering that your decision can affect many people. How do you cope with that? Uh, I'm an academic, so I'm pretty good on that. You know, um, I am not in the design office, so um, so that's, I can cope with that because I'm not in the design office. Uh, I think structural engineering, I don't think it's a very stressful uh, career. Uh, it's like it's like everything, you know. Some some part is, is stressful or not, but as soon as you do your job correctly, you absolutely got no issue that your building is collapsed or not. You have some, um, you follow some standards to make sure you design against some standards. So as soon as you design against the standards and you understand what what is the standards, you are going to you're going to do well. So I don't think it's very stressful. I think it's like in any job, you got some period when you work while well, you're a bit stressed because you need to produce and uh, because it's the end of the project and it needs to be built and you got some period which is a bit less stressful. So I don't think I don't think it's very stressful. All my colleagues who are working in industry I'm working with, they are they are not very stressed because they know what they're doing and, and, and they're doing it well. So uh, no, I don't think it's very stressful per uh, career. Uh, okay, so what ETA score do you need for structural engineering? So, okay, um, seven ETA 73.30, rank 75. Thank you, Galia. No more questions? No, another one, what is the best you need to study to, to get for a job? Griffith engineering, of course, yes. Uh, I cannot answer something, anything else for that. Um, so I say come to Griffiths, I think all the universities are, are, are the same uh, in terms of, uh, of universities. Um, what we're very good at Griffiths University is we are very good at teaching students. I think this is what we're very proud compared to QT or UQ if you compare to the uh, nearby university. I think all the teachers are very passionate about what they're doing and we're very good at getting close to the student and teaching them the way they what they need to learn. So um, we are a pretty good team at uh, Griffith, so I think yeah, you should come to us. OK, any last questions? Um, if no questions, uh, we really would like to thank everyone uh, for joining us today and thank you Professor Benoit Joubert for your time. Um, you. So you can find out more information about our degrees by heading to Griffiths University homepage forward slash engineering. Um, but thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon. Thank you.